I need to get a haircut, I think. <laughs> anyway, it's winter time. That's my excuse. Right. Uh, I think this is the first or the second in the in the start of the vlogs. Um, float fishing. Uh, I'm going to show you today a little bit about uh, the sliding balsa float. Now, the sliding balsa float is a bit of a unique fishing tool because um, it's almost like fishing a big balsa, but sliding. In other words, you can slide the line through the eyes on the side of the balsa to any depth in the swim, which is ideal, obviously, for uh, deep swims. Uh, we can use these on uh, places like the Severn, um, on the Y in, in some areas, even use them on the Gloucester Canal in years gone by, in an island. And, um, you know, there's a lot of fisheries throughout the country that, uh, that the sided balsa would work very well on. In fact, I get orders uh, for this particular float um, all over uh, all over the country. In fact, I've got to make a couple now um, for a gentleman. I won't mention his name on here, just get, uh, to embarrass him, <laughs> unless, of course, he, he wants me to. But anyway, um, first, the first thing I'm going to show you is uh, my blueprint. So I always keep everything in the blueprint. And there's the actual float itself. Um, and of course, I've got instructions as well, which... Obviously, I know off by hand now. But I'm going to start off with a dowel, a bit of balsa dowel. Um, and I know through experience, um, the length of dowel I'll need for the capacity of weight. Now, in this case, uh, I think this gentleman is looking for two force one, uh, force one balsa, sliding balsa. So I know for a fact that it's going to be about three and a half to four inches. Uh, the, the length of the body. So I'm going to mark this off with my tape measure. Okay, got my little tape measure. I have to excuse the glasses because as we get older, our eyes do go. I remember old Kevin Asher's telling me many years ago, I think we were fishing up on uh, Home Pier Point in Nottingham, and uh, I think it was the year that they actually dropped him uh, for the first time. Um, Anyway, I had a little chat with him afterwards, or before I should say, and he was saying that the worst thing that match angler could ever have is losing his eyesight. And he said, uh, because it does slow everything up when you're actually fishing, uh, especially when it comes to tying hooks and, you know, baiting the hook sometimes. Uh, unfortunately, I laughed at him at the time and I shouldn't have. I said, oh, no, it's never going to happen to me. But hey, here I am now, 65, wearing glasses. I tell I tell lies with my age, by the way. <laughs> right, I've got, just got to measure up now. Um, as I said, about three and a half inches is roughly uh, a two, oh, sorry, a four swan shot balsam float. By the time I shape it, uh, by the time I add uh, the stem and the tip to it, it should work out about right. So I'll mark that off first with a pen. Uh, just like that. Okay, and what I'll do, I'm going to cut that now with a small saw. I'm going to just put it on the bench. I don't know if you might see this. Nice and slowly, don't rush it. Turn in the balsa, the dowel slightly, there you are. And that's quite a smooth end, but I will be sanding that off. Again, three and a half inches. Mark a pen. There you 
go. Put the monster back. Sorry about the bobbing and weaving, but uh, now that's how we have to do it. Okay, so there we are. We got two balsa dowels at this moment. Got a small, fine sandpaper block, which I'm just taking off the edges, smoothing it down. Okay, yeah, that's one. That's two. There you go, that's that. Now, I'm going to show you a very important tool that uh, I don't know what they're actually called, but it's almost well, like a triangle. And um, this tool is used to get the center um, of, or uh, the diameter of a round uh, piece of wood or dowel. And in this case, uh, all you have to do is to, if I show you, put it in the center you then run a pen down the line, uh, down the line of the centre, like so. There we are. And then go to a 90 degrees, do it again, and you're left with an X. And that is the dead centre of the dowel. So you do it on both sides, because obviously this is where you're going to put the stem. and the bristle at the top of the float okay so there you go do it again with the, with the other one okay now i've centralized the center of the dowel so that's what i'm going to um, make an impression with a small file, round file. Okay, before I put the stem in. So what I do is just make a small indentation into the into the dowel, both sides, both ends. So now I, I know that if I put a pin right through the middle of that and it comes out uh, through the other end, it's dead center. But in this type of float, I'm not going to actually run something right through the middle of it. Um, I'm going to start off by putting the stem of the float, which is a cane stem, into the hole. And by centralizing it, what I need to do is to twist and push and with a steady hand and eye and push it in slowly. And that's locating that directly into the middle of the dowel. Okay, as you can see. Right, now, to secure this, I need to put a little bit of super glue. And what I do is put just a little drop on the point. Then push this into the, the dowel slowly. And within a second, that should fix itself. So that's the start of the stem. Okay, so I'll do that again with the next one. Yes, anyway, coming back to these balsa, um, they work extremely well, as I say, on, um, on flowing rivers. I mean, you could use them on on still waters if you wanted. Uh, in fact, I did use um, something very similar on Langorse Lake once, very deep um, reservoir with big bream in it. Can't fish it from the bank. You've actually got to go out in boats into the middle. And uh, what we used to do is go out um, and, and anchor up. Now, you've always got to be careful about ground baiting from a boat because a boat will drift and if it drifts and you've thrown ground bait in <laughs> you haven't got a clue where the ground bait is and where the fish are going to end up so as a little little tip we used to have a string with a couple of um plastic bottles you know mark the bottles and on the end of the one end we'd put the bottle and on the other end we'd put um, a brick you know or a heavy weight and that heavy weight obviously would pull the bottle down in the water 
and we'd know then where our ground bait's going to go because we would more or less throw the ground bait around it then we'd fish just slightly off it on the boat and of course if the boat started to drift um at least we knew exactly where the uh, the baited area was going to be and of course um we used to uh, bait it up uh, usually the night before sometimes just like you would in Ireland and then when you go back you'd go and uh, obviously plumb up fish the depth and lo and behold the fish are all ready there ready to feed and um, as I say uh, using this type of side in bosa floats were, were ideal in those sort of choppy conditions when it was a bit choppy um, also uh, we used to fish slide in wagglers as well which again I'll be um, covering the, the sliding waggler uh, methods uh, on a later vl a vlog but at the moment as I say I'm concentrating on this sliding balsa so there you see so far I've introduced the stem into the the body um, I need to cut the stem now and then I'm going to shape the body ready um, almost like a pear shape with a shoulder on the top before I introduce the actual um the bristle which is a nylon bristle um i used to use balsa but this day and age with modern technology uh, these are just as good easier to uh, handle uh, they don't break as easy and they're, they're very uh, colorful very fluorescent and you can see that out in the sun and it's ideal so you know that's what i use these days for making these types of floats right now um as far as the stem is concerned I don't want to make it too short. I don't want to make it too long. So I'm going to give it about six inches. Okay, so I'm going to cut that now with a Stanley blade uh, around. All you have to do is make an indentation. And then once you've done that, you can just simply you know, break it off. And uh, what I'll do, I'll just finish that off with a bit of sandpaper. So it gives it a nice smooth edge. Okay, so there you are. There's the the basis of uh, of the sliding balsa. Now the next stage, I'm going to mount it onto the um, onto the sanded machine, and then I'm going to start to shape it. Okay, uh, with a modeling machine, I should say, sanding machine, same thing. Okay. Okay. Now I've got to the stage where um, I've got the body. And I've got the stem glued firmly into the center. I'm now going to mount this onto the lathe, which uh, is a better name than a sanding machine, which I should have called it in the first place. However, <laughs> uh, right, so I'm going to fix this now to the, the base very close to the bottom of the of the lathe gripping it nice and tight and now I'm going to locate it um, I'm going to locate the top end into that little cross that we marked into the the balsa there you are that's nice and tight I'm going to now make an indentation where the bristle the top of the float's going to go. I'm going to do a trial run to make sure it's running smoothly now, uh, that it's all even. Yeah, that's okay. That's lovely. All right. Now I'm going to start to shape it. And the first thing I'd normally do, I use uh, quite a rough um, piece of sandpaper uh, initially just to get the main of the. Uh, the shape and then I'll smooth it off with the smoother side okay so what I'm going to do now um, I'm going to shape it in such a way it's going to be like a, a elongated pair and on the top I'm going to give it a shoulder but on the bottom I'm going to taper it off obviously for the aerodynamics of the float <laughs>
so there you are there's the basic shape of it and I've, <coughs> I've actually made a, a little shoulder there tapered shoulder and this is elongated into almost uh, into a point um, as you as you saw I actually used the rough bit of sandpaper then a smooth to make it nice and smooth and um, uh, I will finish that off by hand with a, a, a very fine um, sandpaper uh, to give it an extra uh, smooth skin if you like okay so there's the finished product let me just take this out so you can see what it looks like the shape of it now I know for a fact it's going to probably uh, take about four swan shots uh, but I will test them after in a bucket of water to make sure as long as it's roughly there about uh, I, obviously because they're handmade they're not going to be as, uh, as precise as a machine made you know by robots these days but um, at least with handmade floats you, you can design them to your own specification and each float is individual that's the way I look at it um, and it's a nice bit of smooth sand it's almost like paper in a sense but I'll just smooth this off just to give it a nice and smooth surface to it and this is I you know this is beneficial obviously for painting as well and for varnishing Okay, there you go. Just do the top as well. And the body. There you go. Right, now, on the top, I'm going to put the bristle. And again, I use this small uh, file, which, first of all, I'll make quite a, a large indentation. And I'll, by twisting it, keeping a steady eye on it, keeping it centralised, And that should, as you can see, the whole start to form. And when it's big enough and ready for the bristle, I shall push the bristle into the top. Let me see. That should be all right. Yeah, there you go. Again, keeping a steady eye and a hand, there's the bristle. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a bit of super glue on now to fix it. Keep it firm. So that on the top. Not too much, just a little bit. And there you go. We're almost halfway through. just managed to put my nail in the side of that so I'll just smooth that out yeah so it's nice and smooth okay now the next step I'll what I will be doing I'll be uh, whipping a bottom eye on the bottom and I'll be lining it up with a very small eye coming out just under the shoulder of the float and this is where the line will pass through, um, uh, which makes the float um, slidable up and down the line. Okay. Okay, right. Now, I've just done the other, the other one, so I've got a matching pair now. Now, uh, before I go on to the next stage, before I start whipping and, and painting them, etc., I need to seal the balsa. Now, I use a dope, uh, usually... One coat is enough, um, and I, I shall paint this over the balsa and let it stand for a couple of hours before I come back to them. So this is my next stage. Okay, I'll do the whole balsa. I'm twisting as I'm painting. Um, as I say, the balsa is actually sucking up this uh, dope. 
but it's sealing it at the same time. So I'll do the stem as well. Um, now people quite often say to me, you know, about making my own floats. Well, the thing is, I mean, the commercial floats that you buy these days, they're mass produced, then they're cheap enough. I mean, a lot of these floats you actually get are coming from abroad. People don't know this. You know, some well-known named anglers have uh, put their name to a float. And basically they end up buying them from abroad. But that's another story that I'll probably go into at a later date. Might give you some information regarding that. Okay, so that's that stage. Okay. Okay, right, so I've given it an hour or two for this dope to dry. Um, I'm just going to smooth it off now with this uh, fine sandpaper again, which is, as I say, it's almost like paper really. And this will give it a nice finish, a nice shine. Okay, so I'm just doing that. Now, once I've done this, I'm actually going to paint the floats. Um, I'm going to show you a, a special paint that I use. Um, I've experimented over the years with different paints, you know, on these floats. And, you know, I've come, oh, I've come across, well, I've spent a lot of time and effort and money trying to get the right uh, paints, obviously, for the floats. And I've come up with this particular one, which is uh, ideal. And um, I'll show it to you now. It's, it's actually a black granulite uh, used for external uh, properties, but you can use it on timber as well. Um, and when you paint this on, it, it, it gives it a real tough finish and it gives uh, durability to, to the floats. So it's a little tip for any float, float makers out there. Um, as I say, you know, fishing is a learning curve. We're always learning, even now, even today. <laughs> I learn things off other anglers and, um, uh, you know, it's great these the, uh, the videos, YouTube and that. Uh, the internet because now we can give information freely to each other and uh, you know we all get better because of it and um, I know there's some uh, rascals who uh, keep little secrets to themselves and you know you are don't you <laughs> but anyway we'll go into all that because uh, I suppose match fishing is all about competition and uh, and you know I love fishing always uh, always love any type of fishing but match fishing it's good because uh, not only you catch fish, but you compete with the other anglers, and there's always good banter going on. Um, so, uh, as I say, uh, these videos are, are really not just for the match angler, but for anglers generally. And uh, uh, right now, this stage, I'm going to paint the floats. Um, I'm going to show you quickly what I do, um, and then after this stage, I'm going to leave them dry overnight. Um, so, I'll, I'll finish off uh, this particular. Um, part of the uh, uh, the video for this particular float for this sliding balsa and I'll come back and you know you can catch up on, on the next video of this uh, which I'll be going into other, other floats as well um, the reason is you don't want to rush the floats um, I mean you know I, I used to try and rush them but uh, it's always better to, to take your time and you, you get a better finish with them then and they last uh, more durable they last a bit longer as well okay so what I'm going to do I've got my got my um, paintbrush and I'm going to paint the body. I'm going to give it one coat uh, all around. I'm just going to be very gently on the top there because I don't want to give it too much. Um, as I say, this paint's perfect because it's not runny. Uh, it's not actually um, stiff. It's, it's quite a nice texture. For painting floats. There we are. So I do I'll just put a little edge on it on the bottom. Of course I'll show you uh, when I finish the floats off with the whip in and I'll show you how to mark the floats with uh, certain types of pens. There we are. Okay, so I'm going to finish there. Um, 
this little tip i've got these little, little flower uh, pads they they put their flowers you know flower arrangement um uh, people use them and i find them ideal for you know storing the floats like that so you know there's a little tip there for people who were looking to to store floats you know if they're making them in particular or even if you're making rigs you know and you you want to put them in line you want to sort of keep an eye on uh on your production line so to speak yeah because you know um it's a funny thing because i was talking to somebody the other week and i was telling them that uh you know years before british anglers never put floats on their winders um in fact uh i think i was one of the first to introduce it uh, into the uk market and um, i tell you what happened i was actually uh fishing in a european uh well, it was a world championship in switzerland and um anyway we were catching fish they were you know uh, uh, um i think it was um, an austrian guy next to me we were catching fish and i was out um on the on a top of float you know like an old top of float um an even float and on the pole he couldn't quite go as uh, you know the distance as far as uh, uh, the rod line was concerned anyway you see what i was doing and uh I looked right over my shoulder and I, and I, th I thought, what's he doing? He's gone up the bank, gone into his hold on, and he's, and he's like thumbing around. And he comes back down and he's got a rod already made up um, <laughs> with a float already on it. Anyway, next thing I know, he's, he's within, within a minute, he's ready fishing and he's casting out on the same distance as me. And he gave me a bloody good run for my money, I tell you. I was you know, lucky enough to beat him, but uh, just goes to show. And I thought after that, well, you know, I know it's a common practice for us to do now these days, isn't it? You know, have, have rods already made up in their holders and uh, and and close on ones. But at that time, um, I'm going back ooh, 30 years ago now, 25, 30 years. And, um, and it was a real eye opener. And I ended up, I thought, well, I got, you know, there's got to be a way we can adapt that to the British market. And I thought, right, so. I come back and I start experimenting with my stick floats and and um, and, and wagglers and I put them on winders and uh, I even wrote an, uh, an article in the in the Anglin paper about it. And uh, uh, next thing I next thing I knew, they, you know, everyone was started to do the same thing. Um, God rest his soul, old Jan Porter. I remember him writing an article about it. And everyone assumed that he was the first one to actually uh, put floats on winders. Well, um, you know, maybe, you know, there's a universal consciousness. Maybe everyone thinks of the same thing at the same time. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'll leave you, I'll leave you uh, your imagination uh, as far as that's concerned. But um, anyway, so these days, as I say, we do a lot of floats and winders and we we have um we have floats uh, uh ledge rods um in particular are already made up in hold holes um so it's much easier for the match angler to go along then and without any uh messing around he can set it up within within minutes um me personally i try i've come away uh from me uh putting a lot of my floats on winders although i still do it um but i, I try to set up uh, a new rig if i can when i start off because you've got less chance of breaking on knots and and so forth you know um but that's my own personal view All right there you go that's that float so that's that stage now and i'm going to put this to one side i'm going to, whoop, going to let them dry and as i said i'll come back and go through the next stage of making these floats now i'm going to close at this uh, moment um just uh, thanks for watching and uh, please come back and um, you know please subscribe give me a thumbs down or a thumbs up whichever you prefer uh, leave some comments and um, you know cause i want to try and as i said make it as proactive uh, as i can and uh, get people's feedback on it anyway uh, nice to see you again and i'll catch you again bye bye